Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. Every person that has ever breathed on this planet knows that there is a God, that they have come short of what He wants them to be, and that there is an impending judgment against their sins. That's what Romans 1, 18 through 20 is saying. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Thursday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. TODAY I'M GOING TO CONTINUE MY TEACHING THROUGH THE BOOK OF ROMANS. WE'RE NOW IN ROMANS CHAPTER 2. IF YOU LISTEN TO MY TEACHING THAT I DID YESTERDAY FROM ROMANS CHAPTER 1, IT TALKS ABOUT THE TERRIBLE THINGS THAT WILL HAPPEN AS PEOPLE JUST PROGRESSIVELY KEEP MOVING AWAY FROM THE LORD. AND THE LAST PART OF ROMANS CHAPTER 1 WAS ALL DEALING WITH HOMOSEXUALITY, AND and THAT'S LIKE THE LAST STOP ON THE TRAIN TO TOTAL DESTRUCTION. AND WE'RE THERE. WE ARE AT A PLACE WHERE IF THE LORD DOESN'T INTERVENE IN THIS NATION, I DON'T THINK THAT THIS NATION CAN STAND. AND I KNOW THAT THERE'S PEOPLE THAT WILL CRITICIZE THAT, BUT IF YOU LOOK BACK IN HISTORY, it, THIS IS... IT'S borne OUT EXACTLY WHAT THE BIBLE IS SAYING RIGHT HERE. ANY SOCIETY THAT JUST GIVES THEMSELVES OVER TO UNCONTROLLED, UNRESTRAINED SEXUAL IMMORALITY IS DESTROYED. THERE HAS NEVER BEEN A NATION THAT LIVED THAT WAY VERY LONG, AND THIS IS WHERE AMERICA IS BEING PUSHED. SO WE DO NEED TO PRAY FOR THIS NATION. I'M NOT GOING TO SPEND THIS WHOLE PROGRAM ON THIS, BUT I JUST WANT TO SAY THAT IN THE NAME OF JESUS, I AM PRAYING THAT THERE IS A REVIVAL IN THE UNITED STATES AND AROUND THE WORLD. AND YOU KNOW WHAT HAPPENS HERE IN THE UNITED STATES? I BELIEVE THAT WITH ALL OF OUR FAILINGS AND ALL OF OUR MISTAKES THAT WE ARE STILL THE LAST BEST HOPE FOR THE GOSPEL IN THE WORLD. MORE GOSPEL IS PUT OUT THROUGH THE UNITED STATES AND PUT OUT FROM HERE OVERSEAS THAN ANY OTHER PLACE ON THE PLANET. AND I TELL YOU, WE NEED TO SEE A REVIVAL. WE... I JUST PRAY AND I AGREE WITH YOU AND WE BELIEVE THAT GOD IS TOUCHING THIS NATION. WE REPENT OF OUR SINS. SECOND CHRONICLES 7, 14, IF THE PEOPLE THAT ARE CALLED BY HIS NAME WILL HUMBLE THEMSELVES AND PRAY AND SEEK HIS FACE AND TURN FROM THEIR WICKED WAYS, THEN HE WILL HEAR FROM HEAVEN AND FORGIVE THEIR SINS AND HEAL THEIR LAND. AND SO I, WITH YOU, AGREE AND WE PRAY AND WE BELIEVE THAT GOD IS RAISING UP RIGHTEOUSNESS. RIGHTEOUSNESS EXALTS ANY NATION, BUT SIN IS A REPROACH UNTO THEM. SO GOING BACK TO THE BOOK OF ROMANS, I HAVEN'T GOT TIME TO GO BACK THROUGH EVERYTHING THAT I'VE TAUGHT. PLEASE GO TO OUR WEBSITE. PLEASE GET THIS BRAND NEW BOOK THAT WE'RE PUTTING OUT ON TEACHING VERSE BY VERSE THROUGH THE BOOK OF ROMANS. WE'VE ALREADY COVERED ROMANS CHAPTER 1, AND IT SHOWS THAT THE GOSPEL, THE NEARLY TOO GOOD TO BE TRUE NEWS, THAT IT'S BASED ON WHAT JESUS DID FOR US AND NOT WHAT WE DO FOR HIM. THAT IS THE POWER OF GOD TO ANYTHING THAT YOU NEED. HEALING, DELIVERANCE, PROSPERITY, JOY, PEACE, FORGIVENESS OF SINS. THE GOSPEL, WHAT JESUS DID FOR US, INDEPENDENT OF US, IS THE POWER OF GOD THAT RELEASES ALL OF THOSE THINGS. PEOPLE ALREADY HAVE AN INTUITIVE KNOWLEDGE ON THE INSIDE, BUT YOU CAN DEADEN YOURSELF TO IT. AND ROMANS CHAPTER 1, VERSES 21 THROUGH THE END OF THE CHAPTER SHOWS THESE PROGRESSIVE STEPS THAT PEOPLE THAT HAVE NEVER HEARD ABOUT GOD TAKE AWAY FROM GOD. THEY MAY NOT HAVE THE REVELATION THAT YOU AND I HAVE HAD THROUGH THE WORD OF GOD AND THROUGH OUR SOCIETY HAVING A CHRISTIAN BACKGROUND AND HERITAGE, BUT IN THEIR HEART, THEY KNEW THINGS AND THEY WENT AGAINST IT AND THEY WILL BE HELD ACCOUNTABLE. THEN IN CHAPTER 2, AND I'M JUST GOING TO SUMMARIZE MOST OF THIS. I HATE TO DO THIS, BUT AGAIN, I COULD LITERALLY SPEND OVER A YEAR TEACHING THROUGH THE BOOK OF ROMANS AND THERE'S JUST SO MANY OTHER THINGS THAT I WANT TO GET ONTO. SO I'M GOING TO SUMMARIZE THIS. PLEASE GET THE MATERIALS THAT WE'RE OFFERING THAT WILL DEAL WITH ALL OF THESE VERSES HERE. THERE'S SOME POWERFUL THINGS SAID. BUT IN A NUTSHELL, CHAPTER 1 HAD SHOWED THAT THE NON-RELIGIOUS, THE PEOPLE THAT HAD NEVER HAD THE GOSPEL PREACHED UNTO THEM WERE STILL ACCOUNTABLE BECAUSE THEY HAD AN INTUITIVE KNOWLEDGE. IN CHAPTER 2, IT BEGINS TO DEAL WITH THE RELIGIOUS PEOPLE. AND IT SHOWS THAT EVEN THE RELIGIOUS PEOPLE, THEY'RE DOUBLY GUILTY BECAUSE THEY NOT ONLY HAD THIS INTUITIVE KNOWLEDGE OF GOD, BUT THEY ALSO HAD THE WORD OF GOD COMMITTED UNTO THEM. AND SO THEY ARE EVEN MORE GUILTY. YOU KNOW, IT SAYS IN LUKE, I BELIEVE IT'S CHAPTER 12, VERSE 48, TO WHOMSOEVER MUCH HAS BEEN GIVEN, OF HIM SHALL MUCH BE REQUIRED. THE ONES THAT FAILED 
BUT DIDN'T HAVE MUCH KNOWLEDGE WILL BE BEATEN WITH A FEW STRIPES, BUT THE PEOPLE WHO HAD MORE KNOWLEDGE AND THEY FAILED, THEY'LL BE BEATEN WITH MANY STRIPES. IN OTHER WORDS, THERE IS DIFFERENT LEVELS OF ACCOUNTABILITY. SO EVEN A PERSON WHO HAS NOT uh, HAD THE GOSPEL AS SUCH PREACHED UNTO THEM IS STILL ACCOUNTABLE TO GOD BECAUSE OF THE INTUITIVE KNOWLEDGE, THIS HOMING DEVICE THAT GOD PLACED ON THE INSIDE OF EVERY PERSON. BUT THEN A RELIGIOUS PERSON WHO HAS HAD TRUTH PRESENTED TO THEM, THE TRUTHS OF GOD'S WORD, THEY NOT ONLY ARE ACCOUNTABLE FOR THIS INTUITIVE KNOWLEDGE, BUT NOW THEY ARE accounted, uh, uh, ACCOUNTABLE FOR THE SUPERIOR KNOWLEDGE THAT THE WORD OF GOD HAS GIVEN THEM, SO THEY'RE EVEN MORE GUILTY. AND THE REASON FOR PAUL BRINGING THIS OUT IS BECAUSE MANY PEOPLE WOULD SIT THERE AND CONDEMN THOSE WHO, YOU KNOW, HAVEN'T GOT ANY EVIDENCE OF CHRISTIANITY IN THEIR LIFE WHATSOEVER. THEY'RE JUST TOTAL PAGANS. BUT PAUL IS BASICALLY SAYING THOSE THAT HAVE HEARD THE GOSPEL, THEY'RE GUILTY JUST THE SAME. AND HE he CONTINUES THIS ALL THE WAY INTO THE THIRD CHAPTER. I'M REALLY SKIPPING OVER A LOT OF THINGS. BUT IN THE THIRD CHAPTER, HE BRINGS IT ALL TOGETHER TO SAY THAT BASICALLY EVERYBODY has, IS GUILTY BEFORE GOD. AND IT CULMINATES IN ROMANS CHAPTER 3, VERSE 23, WHERE HE SAYS, ALL HAVE SINNED AND COME SHORT OF THE GLORY OF GOD. AND ONE OF THE POINTS THAT HE'S GOING TO BE MAKING IN THE BOOK OF ROMANS uh, ALL THE WAY THROUGH IT IS THAT YOU CAN'T COUNT ON YOU BEING BETTER THAN SOMEBODY ELSE. THIS IS ONE OF THE THINGS THAT PEOPLE CONSTANTLY DO. THEY COMPARE THEMSELVES AMONG THEMSELVES AND MEASURE THEMSELVES BY THEMSELVES, WHICH THE BIBLE SAYS IS NOT WISE. BUT RELIGIOUS PEOPLE DO THIS ALL THE TIME. YOU KNOW, THE PHARISEE IN THE PARABLE THAT JESUS GAVE, HE WAS PRAYING AND HE SAYS, FATHER, I THANK YOU I'M NOT LIKE OTHER MEN. I FAST TWICE IN THE WEEK. I PAY TITHES OF MINT AND ANISE AND CUMIN. I DO ALL THESE THINGS. THANK YOU THAT I'M NOT LIKE THIS PUBLICAN OVER HERE. A PUBLICAN WAS A OVERT SINNER, A PERSON WHO WORKED FOR THE ROMAN GOVERNMENT AND STOLE MONEY AS HE COLLECTED THE TAXES. HE WAS ABLE TO SKIM STUFF OFF THE TOP AND THE ROMANS ALLOWED HIM TO DO IT. SO THEY WERE THIEVES. THEY WERE TRAITORS TO THE NATION OF THE JEW. THEY WERE HATED AND DESPISED. AND HE SAYS, I THANK YOU THAT I'M NOT LIKE THIS PUBLICAN. WELL, THIS PUBLICAN, HE DIDN'T EVEN LIFT UP HIS EYES TO HEAVEN. HE JUST SAID, GOD, I'M NOT WORTHY. OH, GOD, HAVE MERCY ON ME, A SINNER. AND JESUS SAID THAT THE PUBLICAN WAS JUSTIFIED BY GOD, NOT THE RELIGIOUS PERSON. THE RELIGIOUS PERSON WAS LIVING AN INFINITELY GREATER LIFE BUT THE PROBLEM WAS HE WAS TRUSTING IN HIS GOODNESS. AND THIS IS THE POINT THAT PAUL IS MAKING HERE IN ROMANS, THAT IT DOESN'T MATTER IF YOU'RE BETTER THAN SOMEBODY ELSE. WHO WANTS TO BE THE BEST SINNER THAT EVER WENT TO HELL? ALL OF US HAVE SINNED AND COME SHORT OF THE GLORY OF GOD. AND BROTHERS AND SISTERS, THIS IS THE REASON THAT GOD GAVE THE LAW. I'VE GOT A TEACHING THAT GOES INTO GREAT EXPLANATION ON THE AUTHORITY OF THE BELIEVER. I'M NOT GOING TO TAKE TIME TO TEACH IT RIGHT HERE, BUT THIS IS WHY GOD GAVE THE LAW. FOR 2,000 YEARS AFTER THE FALL OF ADAM AND EVE, HE DIDN'T IMPUTE PEOPLE'S SINS UNTO THEM. HE DIDN'T SHOW THEM HOW BAD THEY WERE. ALL THEY HAD TO OPERATE ON WAS JUST THIS CONSCIENCE, THIS INTUITIVE KNOWLEDGE THAT THEY NEEDED GOD. HE DIDN'T WANT TO SHOW US HOW BAD OUR SIN WAS. BUT PEOPLE BEGIN TO COMPARE THEMSELVES AMONG THEMSELVES AND MEASURE THEMSELVES BY THEMSELVES, WHICH IS NOT WISE. AND THEY BEGIN TO THINK, WELL, IF THIS PERSON GOT BY WITH MURDER, WELL, THEN I'M GOING TO GET BY WITH MURDER BECAUSE MINE IS MORE JUSTIFIABLE. IT WAS SELF-DEFENSE. AND THAT'S NOT WHAT GOD SAID, BUT THAT'S WHAT PEOPLE SAID. AND SO PEOPLE BEGIN TO LOSE THEIR SENSE OF WHAT'S RIGHT AND WRONG. YOU KNOW, WE'VE GOT A WHOLE GENERATION THAT HAS GROWN UP NOW WITH HOMOSEXUALITY BEING PRESENTED AS BEING NORMAL, PARADES WHERE THEY BRAG ABOUT IT, DRESS IN DRAG QUEEN STUFF. THEY GO INTO SCHOOLS AND DO ALL OF THIS TRANSGENDER STUFF. Uh, WE'VE GOT A WHOLE GENERATION OF PEOPLE THAT ARE GROWING UP AND THEY DON'T KNOW WHAT NORMAL IS. THEIR NORMAL IS GOING TO BE SO ABNORMAL THAT THEY, they JUST DON'T HAVE A SENSE. They, THEY HAVE THIS INTUITIVE KNOWLEDGE, BUT IT'S BEING CONSTANTLY OVERRIDDEN AND CRITICIZED AND DENIED BY ALL OF THE STANDARDS OF OUR SOCIETY. SO HOW DO YOU DEAL WITH THAT? THE LAW WILL CONDEMN A PERSON AND BRING YOU BACK TO A STANDARD OF WHAT TRUE HOLINESS IS. YOUR CONSCIENCE IS A GUIDE, BUT IT'S NOT A TOTALLY RELIABLE GUIDE. IT CAN BE PERVERTED. IT CAN BE SEARED, ACCORDING TO 1 uh, TIMOTHY CHAPTER 4, 
Uh, people can deny their conscience. In Romans chapter 2, it even talks about that their conscience bears them witness or accuses them. You can get your conscience to where it starts bearing witness with evil. It is a guide, but it's not an infallible guide. So because of society, because of a person's own rebellion towards God, they can skew their sense of right and wrong. This is why God gave the law, because people were thinking, this is okay. Now homosexuality, adultery, lying, stealing, murder is okay. You know, I've been to some countries where lying is just part of the culture. I'm not going to mention the name of this, but we had an employee in one of my places that they would come into the bookstore, and if they paid by check, he'd put it into the ministry, but if they paid in cash, he'd just take it and pocket it, and he was building a brand new house. And we found out about it, and we asked him, and he says, well, I know it's wrong, but this is the way we do it in this country. And if a person pays cash, it's just the way you do it. They, they would lie. They said that, you know, they would designate all of this money to fix roads, and just a fraction of it would get to the roads because it was just the way that it was done. Political figures would take bribes and do things. Sad to say that happens in every country to some degree, but in some countries, it's just nearly acceptable practice. And that's wrong. And because of it, people lose their sense. This guy, when we confronted him, he actually said, well, this is the way it's done in our country. And I said, it's not the way we're going to do it in this country. And we fired him and we got rid of him. But see, there's some people that have lost their sense of right and wrong. So the Word of God, the Bible comes along and says, thou shalt not. And all of a sudden, for anybody who would pay attention, this conscience was brought back to a proper standard. You know, I've often used this illustration that if you could imagine you standing in quicksand and there's people around you and everybody's sinking, it's really so slow, it's nearly imperceptible. And you look at other people and everybody's sinking at the same rate that you're sinking, and so you really, you're comparing yourself with them and everything looks like it's okay. But if somebody was to put some kind of a pole with a marker on it and put these uh, measurements on it, and as you look at that, you realize, uh-oh, I'm sinking, that that standard is getting higher and higher. I'm getting lower and lower. It would change your perspective, and it would, it would help you to be able to take evasive action and to get out of that quicksand and save your life. This is what the Word of God did. People were comparing themselves with other people, and everybody was sinking at the same level, and they were thinking, well, I'm as good as everybody else, and they didn't realize it. So God gave the law. He waited 2,000 years to give the law because he didn't really want us to know how sinful we were because it would make us think, how could God ever love me? And he wanted to love us and he knew that we would have a hard time receiving his love if we really understood how vile we were. So for 2,000 years, he dealt with people in innocency, but eventually he gave the law and when he did, for anybody who would look at that standard and pay attention, they could tell that, man, I've failed. I'm come short of the glory of God. And so this is what he's saying in Romans chapter 1, that he's preaching the good news that it doesn't matter about your performance. Whether you are a person that has never heard about the Lord, you still in your heart, you know you've sinned, you know you need God. If you're a religious person and you've heard the law and you've heard the standard that God put down, that doesn't make you better. It just makes you doubly guilty because you not only have this intuitive knowledge, but now you also have the superior knowledge that the Word of God gave you. And so it makes all of us guilty before God. So that's the conclusion he comes to in Romans chapter 3. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. Let me read some of these verses from Romans chapter 3 and... In verse 9, he's talking to the religious person, and he says, are you any better off than the non-religious person? Well, you've got more understanding, but unless you submit to it and yield to it, no, you're, you're just more guilty than the non-religious person is basically what he's saying. So in verse 9, he says, what then? Are we better than they? No, and no wise, for we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles that they are all under sin. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. This is an Old Testament quotation and uh, in these verses. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. 
they are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of asp is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways, and the way of peace have they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. You know, I've already used this verse, but in Psalms chapter 36, verse 1, it says the transgression of the wicked says that there is no fear of God before their eyes. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 13 says, The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Pride and arrogancy in the forward way do I hate. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. And today we've got people in leadership. We've got people in leadership in many churches that are preaching abortion and saying that they defend that on the basis of Scripture. That's evil. It's wicked. The Scripture does not promote abortion. It does not promote homosexuality. It does not promote adultery and lying and stealing and selfishness and greed and all of the things that we see today. And so the transgression of the wicked shows me that there is no fear of God before their eyes. And that's exactly what this is saying. On our own, no person seeks after God. There may be some people watching this who say, oh, no, that's wrong. I'm seeking after God. Well, it's be you aren't doing it on your own. If you're seeking after God, it's because God has touched your life and God is drawing you to himself. On our own, we don't seek after God. On our own, in Jeremiah chapter 17, I believe it's verse 9, the heart is evil and desperately wicked. Who can know it? That's the nature of man. Fallen man was born separated from God, and inside of every person there is a desire, a lust, a seeking after evil. Now, that's natural. You can seek after God, but if you are seeking after God, it's like Jesus said in John chapter 6, verse 44, where he says, No man can come unto me except the Father draw him. You are being drawn by God. If you have a hunger and a search for God, that's because God has put that in your heart, and you need to follow through and respond to it. You know, I've been seeking God since I was a young child. I mean, back when I was four and five years old, I can remember seeking after God and wondering what God's purpose for my life was. But that wasn't my human nature. That was God working in my heart and revealing Himself unto me. So this is just talking about what we are on our own, and it just continues and maybe I'll come back to some of these verses, but let me jump down to verse 23. Here's kind of the summary of it. It says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Every one of us, you, me, every person that has ever taken a breath on this planet has sinned and come short of the glory of God. And, you know, one of the mistakes that people make is to think that good people go to heaven, and bad people go to hell. They have this kind of like, you know, you have one of these uh, things with a fulcrum in the middle and these scales on the side. And if you're good over here, outweighs your bad. If you're more good than bad, somehow or another, you'll be received into heaven. That's not what this is saying. This is saying that we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. And Romans 6, 23 says the wages of that sin is death. It's not... If you make 99 on a test, you get an A plus because you only missed one question. No, if you miss one question out of 100 on God's test, you sin, and instead of receiving an A plus, you flunk, you fail. You can't approach God based on your own holiness because all of us have sinned. It doesn't matter if you're a good sinner or a bad sinner. There really is no such thing as a good sinner. It's like, you know, having to reach a certain place. And, uh, you know, if, if you had a, a ceiling that was 20 feet high and you had to touch it in order to save your life, and you, some people, you know, they can only jump a foot off the ground. You can get other people that might be able to go up five or six feet or eight feet off the ground. But if the minimum standard was 20 feet, we're all going to die. Nobody can meet that standard. And all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Jesus is the glory of God. It's not a matter of whether you're as good as I am or as good as somebody else. Who wants to be the best sinner that ever went to hell? We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. This is what the Old Testament law was all about, 
TO TAKE AWAY THIS SELF-RIGHTEOUSNESS, THIS THOUGHT THAT SOMEHOW OR ANOTHER I'M GOING TO BE SAVED EVEN THOUGH I'M NOT PERFECT. I'VE DONE IT BETTER THAN SO-AND-SO OVER HERE, AND GOD'S GOT TO ACCEPT SOMEBODY SO HE WILL ACCEPT ME. NO, THAT'S NOT THE WAY IT IS. YOU EITHER HAVE TO BE PERFECT OR YOU NEED A SAVIOR WHO IS PERFECT AND YOU JUST RECEIVE ON THE BASIS OF WHAT HE DID. THAT'S WHAT THESE FIRST THREE CHAPTERS ARE GETTING AT. HE STARTED OFF BY SAYING IT'S THE GOODNESS OF GOD, THE NEARLY TOO GOOD TO BE TRUE NEWS THAT JESUS PAID FOR EVERYTHING FOR US. WE GET IT FOR NOTHING BUT FAITH, AND THAT'S WHAT OPENS UP THE DOOR TO HEALING, DELIVERANCE, FORGIVENESS OF SINS, EVERYTHING. THAT'S HOW HE STARTED. AND IMMEDIATELY, PEOPLE STARTED SAYING, NO, THAT CAN'T BE. YOU'VE GOT TO PERFORM. AND WHAT HE DOES IS FOR TWO AND A HALF CHAPTERS IS JUST SHOW YOU THAT, LOOK, YOU CAN'T APPROACH TO GOD ON YOUR OWN. WE'VE ALL SINNED AND COME SHORT OF THE GLORY OF GOD. THE PEOPLE THAT DON'T KNOW ANYTHING ABOUT GOD HAVE AN INTUITIVE KNOWLEDGE THAT MAKES THEM ACCOUNTABLE TO GOD. THE PEOPLE THAT HAVE HEARD THE WORD OF GOD ARE DOUBLY ACCOUNTABLE. WE NOT ONLY HAVE THE INTUITIVE KNOWLEDGE, BUT WE ALSO HAVE ALL OF THIS WRITTEN WORD AND THE LAWS OF GOD THAT HAVE BEEN REVEALED TO US. AND SO WE'RE GUILTY EVEN MORE SO THAN PEOPLE THAT DON'T KNOW THE LORD. AND SO BASICALLY, WE'VE JUST ALL SINNED AND COME SHORT OF THE GLORY OF GOD. NOBODY CAN EVER APPROACH GOD ON THE BASIS OF YOUR GOODNESS. AND I'M TELLING YOU, WHAT I'M SAYING RIGHT HERE IS SO CONTRARY TO OUR RELIGIOUS SYSTEM. OUR RELIGIOUS SYSTEM IS BASICALLY PREACHING THAT GOD MOVES IN YOUR LIFE BASED ON YOUR HOLINESS. I'VE HAD PEOPLE COME UP TO ME BY THE THOUSANDS IN MY PRAYER LINES AND THEY'LL SAY SOMETHING SIMILAR TO, WHY HADN'T GOD HEALED ME? I FAST, I PRAY, I STUDY THE BIBLE, I GO TO CHURCH, I PAY MY tithes, I LIVE THE BEST I CAN. WHY HASN'T GOD HEALED ME? WHEN A PERSON SAYS SOMETHING LIKE THAT, YOU'VE TOLD ME WHY GOD HADN'T HEALED YOU BECAUSE YOU DIDN'T POINT TO WHAT HE DID FOR YOU. YOU POINTED TO WHAT YOU'VE DONE AND YOU THINK THAT GOD IS GOING TO MOVE IN YOUR LIFE WHEN YOU GET HOLY ENOUGH, WHEN YOU PRAY ENOUGH, WHEN YOU FAST ENOUGH. AND WHAT YOU ARE DOING IS PROCLAIMING YOUR GOODNESS AS THE BASIS OF GOD ANSWERING YOUR PRAYER INSTEAD OF JESUS. AND THAT'S THE GREATEST SIN OF ALL, THE SIN OF THINKING THAT JESUS ISN'T ENOUGH. JESUS, IT DOESN'T MATTER WHAT YOU'VE DONE. I'VE GOT TO BE HOLY. THAT IS VOIDING WHAT JESUS HAS DONE. THAT'S WORSE SIN THAN HOMOSEXUALITY, THAN ADULTERY, THAN ANYTHING ELSE. IT'S PROCLAIMING YOUR OWN GOODNESS. AND SO YOU'VE GOT TO COME TO THIS PLACE IN ROMANS 3.23 THAT ALL HAVE SINNED AND COME SHORT OF THE GLORY OF GOD. THERE'S NONE OF US THAT CAN APPROACH GOD AND SAY, GOD, YOU OWE ME SOMETHING BECAUSE I HAVE DONE THESE THINGS. NOW YOU MOVE IN RESPONSE TO ME. NOPE, WE'RE SUPPOSED TO MOVE IN RESPONSE TO HIM. HE DOESN'T RESPOND TO US. HE RESPONDS TO JESUS, AND WHETHER OR NOT YOU PUT FAITH IN JESUS DETERMINES WHETHER OR NOT YOU WILL RECEIVE. IT'S NOT YOUR GOODNESS. HAS SHOWN ME AN INTIMACY WITH GOD THAT'S NOT BASED ON FEAR. MY ENTIRE PERSPECTIVE ON LIFE HAS CHANGED. TO GET IMMERSED IN THE WORD LIKE THAT IS REALLY WHAT IS GOING TO CHANGE YOUR HEART. IT'S it's GIVEN ME the, THE CONFIDENCE, I GUESS, TO STEP OUT IN THE TRUTHS THAT I'VE LEARNED. THE FELLOWSHIP ALONG WITH THE TEACHING IS THE THING THAT IMPACTED MY LIFE THE MOST. AND IT WAS JUST LIKE BEING PART OF A FAMILY. IT OPENED MY EYES TO KIND OF BE LIKE, YOU'RE NOT ALONE IN THIS JOURNEY. THERE ARE OTHERS THAT BELIEVE LIKE YOU THAT WILL ALSO CHANGE THE WORLD. Andrew is pleased to announce the release of his brand new hardback book titled Romans, Paul's Masterpiece on Grace. This brand new book includes all of Andrew's personal study notes and commentary on the book of Romans, compiled from Andrew's Life for Today study Bible and Living Commentary. This valuable resource is available for a gift of any amount when you contact us. Once again, I'd like to encourage you to get this new book that I've put out ON ROMANS, PAUL'S MASTERPIECE ON GRACE. AND THIS HAS THE PRINTED TEXT OF THE BOOK OF ROMANS. IT HAS MY LIVING COMMENTARY NOTES, THE ROMANS PORTION OF THAT. WE ALSO HAVE THE LIVING COMMENTARY ON MY WHOLE BIBLE. I'VE WRITTEN FOOTNOTES ON OVER 25,000 VERSES IN THE BIBLE. AND THEN WE HAVE TESTIMONIES. WE HAVE TWO DVDs OF TESTIMONIES OF PEOPLE WHOSE LIFE HAVE BEEN CHANGED BY THESE TRUTHS. SO OUR ANNOUNCER WILL GIVE YOU ALL OF THAT INFORMATION. PLEASE CALL OR WRITE AND RECEIVE THESE MATERIALS TODAY. ROMANS, PAUL'S MASTERPIECE ON GRACE, IS ALSO AVAILABLE IN A CD OR DVD ALBUM MADE FROM OUR DAILY TELEVISION BROADCAST. EACH OF THESE VALUABLE RESOURCES ARE AVAILABLE FOR A GIFT OF ANY AMOUNT WHEN YOU CONTACT US. 
Today, you heard Andrew's personal revelation on the book of Romans. You can study through the entire Bible with Andrew when you get his continually updated living commentary. This extraordinary resource contains his personal study notes, footnotes, and commentary on over 25,000 Bible verses. Andrew has priced this valuable study tool at only $120. Go to awmi.net to download yours today. Also today, Andrew's offering the Grace Encounters Volumes 1 and 2 DVDs as his free gift to you when you write or call. This special offer is a $50 value, absolutely free when you contact us today. Or you can get each of these valuable resources as part of the Romans package. This package includes Andrew's living commentary, as well as the Romans, Paul's Masterpiece on Grace hardback book, your choice of either the CD or DVD album, and Grace Encounters Volumes 1 and 2 DVDs. This incredible package has a catalog value of $275, but you can receive all of these valuable resources today for just $197. We want to say a special thank you to the Grace Partners of Andrew Womack Ministries. Your gifts make it possible to put free ministry materials into the hands of many people in need. If you're not already a Grace Partner, we ask you to pray about becoming one today. You can become a Grace Partner or order resources through our website at awmi.net. You can also order resources or receive prayer by calling our helpline at 719-635-1111. Our helpline is open Monday through Friday, 24 hours a day, and Saturday and Sunday from 7.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. Mountain Time. To write us, use the address on your screen. We appreciate your generosity and hope to hear from you today. We'd like to point out Andrew's upcoming speaking schedule. Mark your calendars to come meet Andrew at one of these events and let the Word of God transform your life. In the month of July, Andrew will be a guest speaker in Dallas for the National Association of Christian Lawmakers 2021 National Policy Conference. Then, Andrew will be hosting a special Keras Day livestream event. Please note that the main campus in Woodland Park will not be open to guests. This event will take place via live stream to participating Keras Extension campuses worldwide. Lastly, in July, Andrew will be hosting live stream events to Indonesia and France. And in August, Andrew will be speaking in Durant, Oklahoma. Next, come to the campus in Woodland Park for our annual Healing is Here conference. Then, join Andrew and guest speaker Dwayne Sheriff at the Chicago Gospel Truth Conference in Lombard, Illinois. Lastly, Andrew will be speaking in Lena, Illinois. For more details on Andrew's next meeting in your area, visit our website at awmi.net. I want to let you know that we have now started a Karis Daily live Bible study. We've been doing a Bible study every Tuesday night live for about two years, but now we have five days a week. We've varied the times so that we can accommodate anybody's schedule, and it's going to really be good. We're going to use our instructors from the school, and it'll be a blessing. So remember, we now have a Karis daily live Bible study five days a week.